Hello, my name is uh, Martin Whitlock and I'm the CTO at Telenor Connection. I would like to welcome you all to this webinar today where we have invited Lei Shi, a senior manager and head of technology at Nordstream, part of Accenture. And Lei will uh, present uh, the findings from our latest report about connectivity technologies for IoT. This report uh, is available for download in full uh, from uh, the Connection website. Uh, but um, right now, we hand over to you, Lei, to guide us through the findings of this report. Thanks, Martin, for the introduction. Uh, very happy to be here to present our latest updates to this white paper on connective technologies for IoT. So, but before I start, I just want to say a few words about Nordstrom, who we are. Uh, we are a boutique consulting firm that was founded in 1998, and we had around 20, 20 to 30 consultants in the past until we were acquired by Accenture uh, since last August in 2019. And now we are part of the fifth, half million people company. Uh, but we are still operating uh, as a separate unit within Accenture and keep on doing what we are doing best at. That is to provide strategic advisor services uh, and also to develop thought leadership through publishing white papers and uh, through these media dialogues like this one. So with that said, um, first thing I wanted to show is to give you a bit of context about where this update come from. How, how does that fit into our original white paper that was published in 2016? So the initial, the initial pub, uh, white paper was uh, laying down the frameworks for how to analyze the connective requirements and how do we map to the different use cases that was most promising back in the days. And after that, uh, we have done the first major update two years later in 2018 uh, to take into many feedback we have received and also to include uh, an expanded analysis on 5G and cellular IoT, which was ramping up um, in deployment pace back then in 2018. And now this summer, we have decided to make another major update to this paper, mainly to, incre to include two of the couple new requirements that we believe are become more relevant in the technology choice and also to expand the discussion on some of the aspects that we believe deserve uh, a little bit more space in the white paper. And also we decided to revamp the mapping of technology to different verticals so we can have a more comprehensive view uh, of the different uh, industries. And this slide uh, is trying to show, give you a quantitative view of what are the motivations behind this um, update. The figure to the left shows the global cellular LPWA network coverage currently in the world. And that basically shows MBIoT networks or LTM, or some network have both technology in their uh, space. And this, we, compared to 2018, we have seen the LPWA networks to grow from 50 to 140 uh, today in the world. That's almost increased by three times. And one of the reasons for such rapid take up of uh, LPWA PWA networks in the world is that this how easy it is to introduce into the networks. If you have a relatively modern 4G networks, these features can be uh, introduced as software update, update. So that comes at very low cost. And also if you are deploying 5G, which means you're probably gonna modernize your 4G networks, then the MBIoT or LTEM can probably come as a feature that is for free as part of the 4G uh, modernization process. So we believe as 5G rollout will continue in the world, uh, our PWA network uh, coverage will just continue to increase at the same pace. Then to the right, we are showing the number of global IoT devices in the world. Um, we have seen that it has been steadily increased in the past few years. And if it continues with this KGAR at 15% year on year, then we will be reaching around 22 billion devices in 2014 or 2024. And the fact this growth comes at such steady pace shows that the enterprise is, is picking up the IoT solution in their deployment. Uh, and we can see that this is not just happening in one or two pioneering sectors, but it's actually happening across all the different industry verticals. And that is uh, another major reason for our update, that is to have to include all these verticals so that we can reach all the audience that are interested in this topic. So more specifically, what we have updated in this paper content-wise, uh, in chapter two, which we talk about the connectivity technologies for IoT, we have included two new requirements, device density and latency. 
And we have also elaborated uh, on the cost definition. So not only about the module cost, but also now we include the substitution cost, deployment and maintenance cost to have a complete picture about the cost aspects of uh, IoT deployments. Then in chapter three, we talk about the applica application area technology mapping. And here we, as we said, we have done an exhaustive use case categorization across, uh, according to the purpose of IoT devices that we have included all the relevant industry verticals in the enterprise space. And we have mapped them to the different technologies we have selected. Then in chapter four, we look at the future and identify the few key trends that are going on that we believe would have a major implication on the choices of connective technology for IoT. So if we zoom in to a little bit to the uh, actual requirement itself, um, the reader of our previous white paper might find this one familiar. Uh, this basically is how we categorize the different requirements for the technology um, we put into three dimensions, basically, the technology aspects, commercial aspects, and the ecosystem aspects. And uh, in a technical one, in addition to what we have in the past, like coverage, energy efficiency, and so on, in this version, we have also introduced the latency and device density. And also in the commercial side, we have uh, changed the cost part from just about the module cost to actually encompass, encompass all aspects of the cost. So we have an actual discussion around the TCO which is more relevant for the enterprise when they consider about IoT deployments. And the other part, we haven't made any major change other than we have updated the discussion to the latest development in the ecosystem. And the latency is one of the requirements we included here. It's mainly driven by the uh, emerging need for critical IoT services. And uh, we're talk typically talking about like remote surgery, industrial automation or drones. These are not applications that are present in all the verticals, but definitely they are, uh, where they are presented, they are super important. And they are, even if they are not in high volume, they're definitely in high value. So I think these are, this qualifies as a major requirement for the uh, IoT technology to consider. The second one is about device density. And here we are talking about not just volume, but also having high volume in a limited area. So that means the technology have to be able to handle not only the capacity, but also to manage the interferences with so many devices present in a confined space. And the typical applications we're talking about here are like connected lighting, smart meterings, or livestock trackings. These are usually applications that come with large volume of devices and may probably even with uh, maybe with lower value, but they're definitely relevant. And we see more and more applications that have such a requirement uh, become available, uh, interesting for the enterprises. Then the last one, we're talking about the total cost of ownership. And here, we're, as mentioned earlier, we're not only talking about the module cost, which is depending on the, which technology you choose and the, how, the com how complex is the technology and the, how, what is the volume of that uh, device is available in the market. But here, we're also, also talking about how you would decide to deploy the technology. Would you buy it as a service, which means you have to pay for subscription cost? or are you gonna deploy and run the network by yourself? That means you have to pay for deployment and maintenance cost. So there are many variables and parameters that you have to take into consideration for the, uh, to estimate your total cost ownership. It's not about just which technology you're gonna pick, but also how you're gonna deploy that technology will both impact the total cost of ownership. So hopefully in our paper, we have a more interesting discussion that can be relevant for you to have a bit more thinking around this topic so the, this slide we have here is to show a table summarizing the technology comparison on the technical dimension. Uh, as you can see, we have included the two very new ad requirements in the end. And we have also updated the technology selection so that we included only the most relevant that we believe are um, important today in today's market. Then the next slide we have here showing the comparison, the commercial dimension and the ecosystem dimension. And you can see the cost, we have separated them into three different rows, the module cost, subscription cost, and the deployment cost. And you might also notice that we have actually um, removed any dollar signs or any price tags uh, in this comparison. Uh, because one of the fee important feedback we have got is that no matter what kind of disclaimers or explanations were put into the paper itself about those cost tax, it can be very easily uh, take out of context and become quite misleading. 
So in the end, we decided to keep this uh, discussion on a more qualitative level so that we can help just show the relative difference between technology. And in the end, end of the day, this paper is not trying to provide you a straight direct answer that, okay, if you choose this technology, this will cost you this much. But rather, because as we discussed earlier, you have so many parameters and variables um, to consider. I think this the purpose of this paper is trying to structure those considerations to give you a, um, a guide of how do you approach this problem? What are the important aspects you should consider when you think about the cost uh, of choosing different technology? Then this slide here, we're showing the application area and how the different technology would be suitable for the different application area. Um, on the left column, we have eight different industry verticals that we have selected, which basically cover the entire enterprise space. Um, and then within each vertical, we have looked into the different use cases uh, on a case by case basis. And for each of them, we look at what are the technical requirements they would have and try to map that with different technology. And of course, different use cases will have a different uh, install base of their technology today. And our model will try to forecast what the new shipment would be and uh, how many devices would be for each technology in different use cases in the coming two to four years. And based on that, we aggregate up to show, okay, within this industrial vertical, what would be the connectivity technology that have the highest volume. Um, so therefore, I think it's important to highlight that what we show in the rightmost column here, the, the most common connectivity technology, is showing the ones that have the highest volume present in those different industrial verticals. Uh, it's not to say that if a technology is not mentioned here, it's not relevant. It could be very relevant for some use cases, but it's just overall, when you look at the industrial vertical as a whole, these are the technology that ends up in having the highest volume, but the other ones can still present here but just not being the top two or top three technology. And you will find a more detailed discussion of each analysis of the different industrial verticals and the rationale of why this technology we believe have, will have the highest volume in, in those spaces. The last slide I'm gonna present is, to, is about the, the trends we have identified that will going forward, we believe will have major impact of how enterprise would consider in choosing the different IoT technology. The first one is the continued rise of LPWA technology. So as we discussed earlier, um, cellular LPWA will continue to increase its availability across the world for the reasons as I already mentioned, like continued 4G modernization and the rapid coming of 5G rollout that was leads to again 4G modernization and that would uh, facilitate the introduction of those LTM and the NBIoT technology in the network. And also it's important to recognize that cellular LPWA have a secure longevity because it's part of the 3GPP and uh, MBIoT and LTM will also evolve to be part of 5G standards. So that means if you wanted to invest in a technology that will receive continuous update and support in the coming 10 to 20 years, this is probably a good bet. So that's um, the first trend. The second one is uh, the emergency of private network. This is not exactly a new topic, but it has received much more attention in the past two years for a couple of reasons. The first one being simply the demand for them on the enterprise side. Increasingly, there are more uh, need for data security, data privacy, and the local control. Um, and at the same time, we also see that the technology vendors like Ericsson and Nokia are recognizing those demands from the enterprise side. So they are also adapting their offering they are adapting their cellular technology to be able to deploy it in a private network setup. So there are more options now on the market as well. Then the third one is also a very important aspect is the regulator are now changing the spectrum licensing regime. So there are many countries like Germany have started to offer a localized spectrum license. So that means enterprise can acquire a local spectrum license and deploy a private network within their premises so that they can ensure the quality of service and can really re achieve the potential of having a, a cellular based private network. So nowadays we have MNOs uh, and the network equipment there's, uh, that are offering to deploy and maintain, maintain and operate private networks for the enterprises. So there are much more options in the market. And the last one um, is it's probably not a trend, but more uh, increasing awareness of the fact that when enterprise choose an IoT technology, 
uh, or deploy IoT solution is probably going to end up with having multiple technologies. It's not going to be just having one, simply because, like we mentioned earlier, in the different industry verticals, even in, with any of those, you will probably find many, many uh, use cases, and some of them have totally different or contrasting requirements. It's the same for enterprise. When you deploy your IoT solution, you probably end up having to address a multitude of use cases that have different requirements. And it will be very difficult to have one technology that optimally meet all the requirements. So it's probably you have to, to find the best solution. You might have end up to choose the different technologies for different uh, use cases. But this, of course, will have to add complexity to your uh, IoT system. But it's not just a bad thing, because at the same time, uh, having multiple technologies can lead to some potential good optimal solutions. For instance, you can increase your coverage by having a short range uh, technology for local deployments and uh, link that to a gateway that is connected to a wide area technology uh, to the backbone and in the end to your cloud. So this way you can actually improve your cost structure and improve your cost efficiency of your IoT deployments. So that's something to keep in mind also when you're choosing a technology. This is not going to be probably end up with just one best option. You probably have to choose a few. So with that said, I think that concludes the presentation. And for your information, please read the paper. And also, if you have any questions, we'll be very happy to discuss with you. Just shoot an email or give me a call. Uh, we'll be there. Thank you so much, Lei, for this uh, very good presentation. And I hope that all of you had an interesting webinar. Um, and um, finally, I would just like to remind you that the full report is available for download at our website. And um, with that, I wish you all a good day.